Okay. So how would I make a number line in like base six? What would a number line in base six look like? I'll get it started. Zero, one, two. Don't help we me stop out. at five? Sorry. Don't we stop at five? Yes. Good. All right. Zero, one, two, three. So this is base six, for example. One, two, three, four, five, and then what goes here? Zero, one, no. a one. No. Ten. 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 Oh, right. Right. I like it. Yes, maybe. Mm -hmm. So you actually can create a number line, and then you can do problems on it, just like we do for base 10, just like we do for our number system. So base five, it's gonna be one, two, three, four, ten. Yes. So for example, real quick, uh, and this would go like this, 11, 12, are you guys, everybody? Uh-huh, I'm, I'm here. Everybody, okay. So if I wanted to show, uh, so if I wanted to investigate what is three base six, plus five base six. How can I do it on this number line? How do we do it? How would we show students to use a number line to investigate addition? We're gonna do the same thing. Yeah, so I go up three. So that's three base six. And then I go one, two, three, four, five. Right? Yes? So then what's three base six plus five base six? 12. 12 base six. Let's make sure this makes sense. What is three plus five? Six. What is three plus five? Eight. 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 How would you write eight in base six? Would it be one six plus two ones? That's eight, yes? <laughs> yes. No, everybody, listen, listen. Are we all really comfortable with base six? If I said, what's 11 base, well, yeah, what's 11 base six times 23 base six? Could uh, you do it? No. Shit, no. <laughs> Right? And this is nothing against you at all. Because how often do you use base six? Never. Never. Compared to how often we use base frickin' ten. Uh. <laughs> you did the wrong time. Right. So you, I'll have you up on the board doing some base six. Oh, no. Excellent. Oh, no, no. All right, now, guys, guys. So your students are gonna know as much, some of your students, depending on what grade you're teaching, are gonna know as much about base 10 as you know about base six, right? So when they're learning stuff like uh, on a normal number line, they're learning what's two plus three, and they're doing one, two, and then one, two, three, they are really feeling the same way we are right there, right? Totally. And, and but So this is one reason why we do a lot of things in different bases here, is so that, again, what's one of the main themes of this? so we can kind of feel the way our students do, so we can kind of experience what they're going to experience. Because the more you know how it feels like to somebody you're trying to help, the more you can help them, right? Maybe? No? Are you guys all right? Yeah. Uh, Everybody looks a little oppressed. I'm sorry. Because uh, is this <laughs> how I do it? Or I just, so I'm realizing for 5A, is, is, is it because you wanted me to do that? One, like two, that? three, four, there you go, yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Right. Because I, I'm starting to understand it because at first with the tutor, he was teaching me how to understand it correctly. But now when you showed me like in person, yes. I can I'll, I'll, I'll understand it. Okay. And so... And as everybody everybody here knows that we have on-campus tutoring, right? Yeah. No. Okay. That's tutoring that happens on campus. We only, I only know the tutoring that happens on virtual. <laughs> But also, it's like we have cheese pizza. What's that? Cheese what? The cheese. What did I get for 14 B wrong? Right. There's too many things happening. So, I wasn't on campus one, but they closed out on campus version at three. Yes. Um, but the rest is all on Zoom. Until, Until all eight, and then Net yeah. Tutor takes over. There's another one that's 24 hours. So anytime we don't offer tutoring like on campus or remote, that is when Net Tutor takes over. So again, it's all in Canvas, in the modules under the tutoring stuff. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. And okay. yes. So you said for fourteen B, and this one is this one correct for fourteen B? Sorry. This one. This one's good. Okay, yeah. so that yeah. one then. But because they specifically, 
Yeah, this one you got to look back at again. That's not quite what they want. They want a number line, but that's not quite what they want there. Then what did they exactly want? Ah, so look it up. Look at the question. Find an example like it. It says sketching visual model of the situation represented. Any other specific questions from homework? The thing is, I'm looking at it, measure model representation situation described in A, and in A, I said Lily had $9, so fell, but, but $5. So you got to look up that model they're talking about because you didn't model. quite do it correctly. Yes. But I'm looking at this, that's what I followed. This one. Okay. So you got to be, all right, you didn't quite follow it correctly. Yes. Five and three point one. Oh, okay, that's, all right, that's the one I think that I kind of went off on. Show that the commutator property whole number addition holds for the following example in other cases. Using a different number line. Oh, this is the number line thing. Yeah, so this is um, where we do this, but for those specific bases. Oh. Yeah, yeah, okay, I like it. So, real quick, uh, if I wanted to show a student, a uh, young elementary school student, that... 1 plus 5 is the same thing as 5 plus 1. I could do 1, right, plus 5. And then on another number line, I could do 5 plus 1, right? So that's what they mean by using two different number lines. You just have to make a number line appropriate for that base. So you put 10 in the right place, right, all that kind of stuff. Um, 3.2B, mm -hmm. number 5, does it, I must wondering if it's going to be removing any prune whole numbers or just oh no <laughs> all right this is a funny question so the question 5a and 32b is the set of whole numbers with three removed not three numbers removed the number three. Oh. yeah okay but i like i don't blame you i don't blame you they should have said with the number three removed because with three moves is like three moves any three I want. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Did I follow it correctly now? Because this is what this chart means. Take away. Wait, wait. What? Did they specifically say take away? They just said. No, no, no. What they say in the in the prop? No, no, no. Which one is it? It's a B. It said sketch model with representation in mat A. And Measurement model. Yeah. And it says missing add in. Missing add in, yeah. This is the takeaway approach. Oh, okay. then where's the missing add in? <laughs> oh, oh. oh what the okay, heck? Okay. There we go. Wait, Sorry, I have another question about this. All right, one more question. Go ahead. Whole numbers with three, number three, right? Actually, but it, can it be, is that the lens place or the. the no, just put the number three. So instead of zero, one, two, three, four, it's zero, one, two, four. So it can't be thirty. There can't be no thirty. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. No, they mean just the number three, not the numeral three. So like just the number three. So the numeral three exists in thirty and thirty-three and all that kind of stuff, but the number three is gone. Yes. Okay. But it's closed. If it's closed, then it has to have that number. Because why? What's one plus two? Three. So would that be closed? That set? That's no. Yeah. I'm talking about multiplication, though. Okay. Okay. 3.1A? 12. Okay. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Let me put this up here. This seems to be a common thing, and I don't blame you. So if you haven't asked this question, you might have this question eventually. All right, kids. Everybody strap in. All right, there we go. <laughs> I'm making butter. Today's lecture brought to you by Microsoft. And we're in chapter four now. We're doing one question and then we're gonna get into chapter four. So this question.
Right? Does that look familiar to anybody? I know at least a couple of you guys look familiar because you, you asked me about it. So they try to do two things at once. Guys, is subtraction closed under whole numbers? No. no. Why not? Because if you do three, uh, three minus five is negative and negative. Sure. Five. Yeah. So you would put a three here, which is different from five, which equals a number that's different from either of them. Right. So this is what they mean. This is a nifty. Now watch this. Commutivity would mean x minus y equals y minus x. Is everybody here good with what I just said? If subtraction was commutative, that would mean that x minus y would equal y minus x. If you say that to a six-year-old, how are they going to look at you? Right? Yeah. So look here. Doesn't this mean x minus y equals y minus x? Do you see how the shapes term the same way a variable would? Is a six-year-old cooler <laughs> with triangles and squares? Triangles and squares versus x and y? Yes. Their whole life is about triangles and squares to some degree, right? Okay. So here, what would you put? If you put seven minus four, you would have to put four minus seven to investigate if it's commutative. Yes? So the shapes you're just telling you, whatever numbers you pick, have to show up again, but just reversed. Triangles first instead of last. Squares last instead of first. Yeah. So the actual question is pretty straightforward. It's just, just show me why it's not close. Show me why it's not commutative. But the shapes, they're trying to do two things at once, like I was telling other people. I'm trying to show you that the shapes could sort of be a precursor. Ooh. A precursor to variables. So that's the whole thing they're trying to do. But really, the problem is easy. It's just, I just put numbers into... Totally, yes. Triangles. But their point was... The shapes kind of show students where the numbers have to show up. Same way for us in algebra, what tells us what, where to put certain numbers? Variables. We find the x, we put the x value there. We find the y, we put the y value there. Here, you find the triangle, you put the triangle value there. Same idea. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. Subtraction will close in any order would result in a true structure. What? Uh, I, this is what I, you're underlining. Subtraction were closed any would result in a true something. Three minus two is not five, right? So so. Well, no. What's? Three minus. Oh wait. So three listen, minus, listen. It, to be closed in whole numbers. If an operation is closed under the whole numbers, when you apply that operation to two things, your result better also be a whole number, right? And where do whole numbers start? Where do whole numbers start? Zero, because that's the number that looks like a freaking hole. That's right, that's the way to remember. Whole numbers start at zero, right? So therefore, if I have any two numbers and I subtract them and it's not at least zero is an answer, then it can't be closed, right? So two minus five, Andrea, what's two minus five? Two minus five would be ne ne negative three. Okay, because so I, is, it, I is, is, is negative three a whole number? No. Hell no, therefore it's not closed. Yes, so in order to be a commutative associated in, or no, closed, no, in order to be closed, closed it has to be then the result right? of the operation always has to come back to the set. And we just found one example where the answer is not in there, right? So if this room had all the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, and forever, can I subtract anybody and they're still in the room? No, because negative 2 ain't in the room, right? That's why I like the idea of closed. It's, it contains all of its own results. And with subtraction, it doesn't. Is that, is that all right? That, that, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Um, 15? 15? Yes. Okay. Can you say? What's happening? Work with me. Get 15 up there. Oh, just kidding. I got it. Never mind. Oh, thank God. I can't even get it straight. Um, we got. 
I guess it's supposed to be Ben Franklin. God. Ben, something's happened to Ben. You know, one that I kite too long. Now it's 14 feet good now? I did it exactly as it said. Okay. Yes, that's good. That's the missing added. Good. All right, guys. So let's get into, now, of course, what's happening Thursday? Quiz. 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 Well, for Wednesday, I have quiz. Sorry? For Wednesday, I have the quiz. I know, I know. Your quiz is was all about uh, chapter three was interesting because it addition and subtraction different ways to teach kids how our number system works focusing on the whole numbers because most of them are just going to be talking about whole numbers uh, eventually in this course we're going to get to fractions everybody's really excited about that um, and then we talk about multiplication division properties of that how to show how it works the basic definition repeated addition is is the most basic Definition of multiplication. Then, obviously, we talked about exponents. That made a ton of sense, hopefully, because exponents are just repeated multiplication, like multiplication is repeated addition. Okay, all right. You guys are very excited about this review. Now, in chapter four, let me give you an example of where we start off in chapter four. Um, now that we've talked about the different properties and so forth, uh, and how to try to teach them. Um, we're gonna start talking about kind of the next level of things. So, so for example, if I wanted to add these, what's the quickest way to add those? Can anyone see anything interesting about two of those numbers? They make a hundred. Right? You guys with me? And I'm sure you guys do that uh, regularly. Right? So, you, all right, all right. so we're going to start talking about uh, ways to quickly do things mentally. Ways to quickly do things in your head, including how to estimate what the answer should be. Right? So that's what we're going to get into with chapter four. Um, let me give you a couple more examples, see what you guys think. Uh, let's see. Hello. Oh, here's one I love. Okay. So here's one example. One example is kind of making a hundred or a thousand or ten. Right? So for another example, real quick, if I had six, uh, I think I did this last time, didn't I? I can't remember. Six plus two plus four plus eight. Well, that's ten and ten is twenty, right? Try to find numbers that are kind of complementary. Together, they make a nice whole number. Alive yet? Do you need some more? Mm -hmm. All right. At least the lectures aren't there. Sadly, yes. Some <laughs> weird allergic reaction to my lectures. I understand. I heard it's math anxiety. Could be. I mean, it really could be. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> I told you about that when I started hiccuping, and my teacher just had to say, Let me hear it. And they were gone, man. I was scared. Yeah. Okay. So this is this is such a freaky little thing. Not many people really think about this. What if I had to do this? Yeah, let's do that. I like that. What do you mean how to do that real quick? You had to do it in your head. No. No. Uh, my... Or you fail, right? Well. And you're like, okay, maybe I'll try. So this is really now. Watch. This is so cool. Okay. <laughs> Remind me again what multiplication means. Repeated addition. Repeated addition. So can I look at it backward? Like, isn't this 17 21s? Yep. All right, now look at it like that. This is 17 21s minus 14 21s. Well, we did is how many 21s? Stay Three with me. 21. Three 21s. So what the shit is? Three 21s. What? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> 17 21s, yes? Yeah. 
minus 14 21s, yes? So can you see in your, stay with me. What does 17 times 21 mean? Doesn't it mean 21 17 times with additions? So I have a string, now look at me. 17 times 21 is a string of 17 21s. Yes, with pluses. What happened over there? You guys all right? I just can't see. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> then, all right, everybody with me? Yeah. Can you all see it? 17 21s in a row. Minus 14 21s with pluses in the middle. Wouldn't 14 of them cancel? Yes. So it really is 17 things minus 14 things is three of those things. Three 21s is 63. Yes? Mm -hmm. I use that trick all the damn time. Okay. Not I don't think I've had much of a chance to like show off my amazing math skills, but <laughs> this is one of the stupid little things I can do, you know, in my head because I, I know about it. I can never do that math in my head. And I'm so beautiful. But that's just beautiful. because. Did anyone ever show you that? Oh. No. Did no. you ever think about that? No. 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 Do you want? Do you think that that might happen every now and again, especially in a controlled setting like a math class? Yes. Yes. So isn't that kind of good to know? I really want to make sense. So watch. So. How is this problem different? Uh, what's 17x minus 14x? 3x, of course. Isn't that the same damn problem? Yes. 17 somethings minus 14 somethings is three of those somethings. It's just up here, I just I know what those somethings are. So I could do that last step. Kick ass. All right, I like it. That's one of my favorite little things. That makes sense. So I could say square the time test. Can I say screw the PEMDAS for a the while? The funny thing, real quick. <laughs> Me too, that's what I was thinking The of. funny thing about PEMDAS, let me write it the right way. Pedmasa. 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 Pedmasa it's not me, officer, please, it's the Pedmasa. Please pardon Pedmasa. my dumbass. Oh, please. Gotta take you in. Like, please. Please excuse. My, my dumbass son. My dumbass son. What else? Please excuse my deficient, my math. My no. deficient algebra <laughs> skills. Ah, oh, that's a good one. Or my dear Aunt Sal, if you want to be traditional. Okay, now, uh, technically, real quick, technically, in, if I was using order of operations, what would I have to do there first? No, 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 no. Nope. If I'm following order of operations directly. Multiplication? Don't I have to? No, come on. I love it. Parentheses. The very first thing, right? So tell me what X plus 2 is. Don't freaking know. So, guys. You can break order operations, but it's not really breaking it. If you rewrite the problem you're given, you could find a way to do it. The way it's written right now, I cannot do it because I don't know what the shit x plus 2 is. You're like, B, right? Is it equal to the color yellow? I don't know what the shit is. So another way to rewrite 4 x plus 2s is to write 4 x plus 2s, right? Because multiplication is repeated addition, yes? Right? <laughs> I guess with me? I think I showed you this exact thing as to why distribution works. And then if you really want to stay, let's, let's stay technical, right? Then I can use commutivity. I can move all my X's together. How many X's do I have? Four, Four X's. And how many twos do I have? Four. Four twos. And that's of course where we make the shortcut this. That's where the shortcut comes from. There wasn't some well, let's make it so that I can just put the number to both. No, it's because it just freaking happens. And then we went, oh, there's a shortcut. Let's give it a name. Mm -hmm. And then the math people, we actually named something good. Distribute. Isn't that cool? Distribute this to everybody. That makes sense for once. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize on behalf of all my math people that came before me. <laughs> you dishonor on you and dishonor on your cow. Sorry? That's a thing. Dishonor on you and dishonor on your cow when you shame upon your know. math ancestors. I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, we don't have as much honors. <laughs> All right, here we go. So that's, you can get around PEMDAS. You can. But it takes a rewriting of the problem. If I rewrite the problem, then I can still follow PEMDAS, and we totally did. Blah, 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 blah. Do I have it right now? No. Oh, all right. What about this here? 
What is it? Eight times. It doesn't matter, Kevin. Eight times seven times twenty-five. Yeah, I like it. Of course, we're still using x for multiplication. You guys do have to get used to that because it's gonna, you know, that's the way it's gonna be. Eh, not bad. Yeah, yeah. But it's, I'm kind of happy if you're a little bit taken aback by seeing x's in there. Is anybody so thinking x squared? Twenty-five isn't as crazy, but the eight x's. Eight times. Eight times. Exactly. <laughs> All right, you gotta get used to it. Aren't you gonna be showing this to your students? Yes. Okay. okay. This kind of, you know, if there's a shorter way, but I don't know how if I can get the whole thing. Seven times twenty because twenty times seven would be one hundred forty. Good. But now you have to multiply it by five. Sure. Yes, but there's an even better thing to do here. What? What level of PEMDAS am I on? P. P. Not really. <laughs> Well, I mean, what's the only operation in here, really? Uh, multiplication. Multiplication, right? Is, isn't that associative? Isn't it commutative? Couldn't I therefore multiply whatever order I want to? I'm on a single level. It can come whatever order it wants to. That's why you can do 2 plus 7 plus 8. You can do 2 plus 8 first, of course, you, right? Because addition is commutative, associative, all this shit. So it's multiplication. If only that was a 4, what's 4 times 25? So what's eight times 25 then? Two freaking hundred, yes. Isn't eight two fours? So again, this is that same idea about trying to find complementary kind of pairs, right? That'd be 1,400. So eight times 25 is 200 times seven, exactly. All right, I like it. You always like when there's a 25 in a multiplication problem because you can almost always work that kind of thing in there. I like it. What about what about this here? Um, what about ninety nine times eighty seven? I want the exact answer. I like this one because it's sort of the opposite of the one earlier that I was most excited about. If you want to estimate, you can, but I don't want an estimate. I want the exact answer. It's and I don't want you to do it the long ass way where you put it 87 under 99 or something. Is it equal to 100 times 87 minus, so 99 87s is 187 minus 187. Yes? Yeah. Isn't that the reverse of the That's thing we're doing wrong? Cool. Oh, wait. Yeah. 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 And this is not that bad. This is 8700 minus 87. It's 8613. 8613. <laughs> I like that. That's, that's my favorite reaction yet. But I mean, it's so important for you guys to know things like this, so then you can try to sneak it in for your student. Now, with your young students, you want to be really kind of rigid in some of the basic concepts. But once you've got those down, you can start showing them things like this. I mean, again, depending on what grade you're going to teach. Okay. Make sure I don't know if those got you spun around correctly. Camera. They got on this side of the board. Is it here? Alright, here's something weird. I'm just gonna throw this at you. See what happens. So let's write it a different way and let's see what this really is. A plus B divided by C, yes? Can't I break it up then? Isn't this A over C plus B over C? Yeah. Isn't that what this says? Okay. There's a very technical name for this. This is right hand distribu distribution, good board. Right distributive property of division. 
I almost don't care about this name. Not just because I can't say it, right? This new uh, property of division. But because it almost doesn't matter what the name is. We know this is true. It just looks weird when we write it in a single line. Again, I, I agree. Name. It's a long name for a very simple idea. You can break shit apart. We know that. All right. Get. Yeah. Um, oh, I think I sort of already talked about this a little bit. Maybe. Um, yeah. Okay, okay. 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 Sort of using this. What if I had to do this? Uh, can you use what we just talked about there to do this? What What's kind of wrong with that question I just asked you? How many parts are there here? Two. And here there's only one, but you can fix that, can't you? Why do you add parentheses? <laughs> To kind of show you that you want to split that apart. Oh. Yeah. You're right, I don't need them, but on the next step you will. So it's just trying to get you to realize, okay, I can keep this together. What are some good numbers that I can split that up into? You can use subtraction too. So what do you want it to do? The two numbers you split it up into, what do you want them to do? Divide by nine. Divide by nine easily, right? Okay, let's see what you guys think. And you could use addition or subtraction. It works the same way, you break it up the same way. So what do you guys think? What, what number is 1710 close to that nine goes into super easy? 1800, yes. And how far off from 1710 is 1800? Nine. So what's 1800 divided by nine? 90 divided by nine, see? This was not as exciting, but it's it made sense to me. Come on. So eighteen hundred divided by nine minus ninety divided by nine. It's exactly what we we're just talking about, right? Nine goes into eighteen. You guys all right out there? Nine goes into eighteen twice. And you have two zeros. Nine goes into nine once, and you have one zero. You understand though what we're doing we're, we're, what we're trying to do is make what's called compatible numbers what numbers are compatible with 9 18 9 45 right any in fact did I talk to you about this yet did I talk to you about how can you tell if something's divisible by 9 I feel like we talked about this. at the beginning but I don't very beginning <laughs> like why is 45 divisible by 9 because 4 plus 5 is oh, nine. remember that okay. so what can what numbers are compatible with 9 through division any numbers that, or all the digits add up to be nine, really. And again, and what's 1710? What are the numbers add up to be? Nine. Freaking nine. So I know it's gonna be divisible, it's just not easy to do in my head. So what do I do? I break it up into two numbers that are easy to do in my head that are 1710. Because then the answer has gotta be the same damn thing, right? Maybe. So this is loosely tied to estimation, but this isn't estimation yet, because I want to know the right answer. Estimation is just, what is it about, right? Okay, maybe. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. So here's some other, okay. I kind of talked about this at the beginning, but let's give it a, an official name. Um, So we got this interesting idea of uh, compensation. What do you guys think of when I say the word compensation? Money. money, right? Compensation is how much money you get for doing a job, right? So it's kind of like two things that go together. You, you do a job, you get money for it. Yes? Okay. Um, so 
additive compensation Very squeaky. Do I have another one? Oh, okay. This is all right. We're we're leading up to something interesting here in a minute that we already talked about the other day. Um, but something like this here. All right, so this is, again, every time we do a problem, it's not the only way I could do it. I'm just highlighting a certain method at a time. There's other ways to do this, but for right now, what if this was a 37? Why would that be nice? 43 plus 37. Yeah, 43 plus 37 would be well, 80. 80. 80. So if I do make it a 37, what has to happen at the same time? Gotta be 18. Okay, let me stop for a minute. Compensation means you give something to somebody else, yes? Somebody's gonna give you money, that's your compensation. So what did the seven what did that 19 just do? Didn't it give one to the 36? Yeah. Oh, that's why we call it compensation. It's crazy. So now 43 and 37 is 80 plus 18. What's another way? Anybody know another way I could do that problem? Yeah. So I can make the 19 a 20. All right, that makes things a little bit better. So I get 43 plus, and still by making it a 20, so I'm going to give one from this to this guy. So it's got to become 35, right? Five. Okay. So this is 55, and that's not bad. Thank God we get the same answer, right? That's all right. Okay, I like it. So th again, as always, there's some, some terminology we're not used to, but a lot of the stuff that the terminology describes are things we've probably done before. We're not normally near an airport, are we? What the hell is going on up here? Um, There's, you guys remember what I told you about uh, a quick way to do this kind of problem? Um, 1,000 minus 817. That problem sucks a lot. Why? All the zeros. All the freaking zeros. Let me make it worse. Why? Because I want that point. And I'm up here at the board. Now, <laughs> teach your own class. Yeah. <laughs> when you get your teeth well. <laughs> um, does anyone remember the way we can make this easier immediately? So I don't have to borrow anything. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Somebody's always like, Mr. Wally, you know they invented these calculator things, right? Does anyone remember? Changing it into nine. Yes, yes, yes. So eight minus five. What does the answer really mean? It means they're three apart. Yes? So if I made this seven and make this four, aren't they still three apart? Don't I conserve the distance? So if I change both numbers in the same direction, I'm keeping the answer the same because the so, distance is the same. So could you do nine, 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 whatever that is? I'm not really sure. Nine, 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 nine. And then change eight, one, seven, one, nine. Okay. Yeah, this will be minus eight, one, seven, one, eight. Eight. So they both went down by one. So the difference has to be the same. So this is kind of like one level up from subtraction. What does subtraction tell you? Distance. Okay, if I keep the distance the same, the answer will be the same. Okay, well, if I make one go down one, make the other one go down one, the answer is the same thing. That's a hell of a lot easier, yes? Yes? No? Yes. Yes, okay. Yeah. It's all, but everything is palindromic. Do you guys know what that means? No. Family dream, like the word race car? Oh, What's the word race car backwards? Uh, backwards. Right, yeah. I like somebody's like, it's the same backwards, John. Right. So palindromic stuff. 
English, this is one place where English and math agree, kind of drama stuff, both of us get kind of excited about that. There's a sentence, 10 animals slam in a net, I think is the one that I know. So if you turn that sentence backwards, I mean, just completely reverse it, it's the same sentence. Mm -hmm. So there's people that create their own, and I'm like, I don't have that kind of... Taco cat. What is it? Taco cat. Taco cat. Taco cat? Yeah. Taco cat. Taco cat. Taco cat. Taco cat. Taco cat. Wait, we were still writing the... Well, that yeah, I'm writing the B. Huh? Okay. Plus, I, I just want my water. Oh, also, the, the time for the uh, ARC is actually 3 o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so just letting you know. <laughs> now I'm good. Taco Cat is a game? Yeah. Right. I learn as much as you can. So what about... All right. So this idea of compensation is when you... So here's... Uh, Here's another example of uh, compensation with subtraction. Uh, I gave myself a nice little example. Yeah. So what about what could you do here to make it? not quite the same thing we did there? How could you make this one a little bit quicker to do in your head? Same Ooh. idea, but instead of taking them both down by one, you add by one by yeah. twenty nine to thirty. Yeah. So that goes to thirty. This better go to forty. 40. 40. Eight, right? Because you want to keep the distance the same, yes? The answer, what's up? Sorry. Hello, English is the question mark? Sorry? <laughs> what happened? Oh, subtraction. Oh, okay. Sorry. I feel the multiplication. I got you. I got you. All right. I haven't gone quite that insane yet. Is it not? Oh, we're subtracting. We are subtracting. <laughs> I just had a very little <laughs> subtraction side. Uh, is everybody cool with this now? Yes. Yeah. If that goes up by one, that has to go up by one, and then of course that's easy. So these are kind of the same idea from two different directions, right? So if this number is really close to a whole number, then you might as well make them go up until that's a whole number. And if this number is a perfectly whole number, you want to make them go down so you don't have to borrow so much shit. Nines are the best thing to see on top, right? Okay. Um, so that's additive and subtraction compensation, what about multiplicative? Oh, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I love it. You guys, oh, I have a funky little example here. Mm. All right, let's write this weird ass thing down. Multiplicative compensation. So what about this? Um, 2.5 uh, times 12. Mm. No. Are you guys excited about that? No. <laughs> no, that's the most. You said yeah. <laughs> You're awesome. You're the one that was really like, I don't know, six. Wait, isn't it actually yeah. actually twelve? Is it Oh, be careful. I can't add because it's multiplication now. Right? So when I have addition, I can subtract and add the same amount within the same problem. So now I'm going to want to divide and multiply. So why does 2.5 suck? Because it's a decimal. Yeah. Yes? Is a half, if you're multiplying by a half, is that the same thing by dividing by 2? Yes. Yeah. So watch what I can do. What the heck? Can't I borrow a factor of 2 from him? Yeah. Or her? I don't know. And then 2, and so, is everybody with me? So I just divided this by 2. So can't I multiply this by 2? So now it's all about multiplication division, whereas this was all about addition and subtraction, giving the same thing to each person. So I have to take a factor two from them. Let me actually show you the full thing behind the scenes. So behind the scenes, 12 is two times six, yes? So then two and a half times two, two and a half times two is? 25 double. Five, five point zero. Yes, so five. So the answer is third. Right, yes, no? Yes. No? Some of you guys are saying no. What's happening? Have you guys never done something like that? No. 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 Doesn't that kick ass? I don't know. Can you explain it slowly? Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. All right. I got 26. I guess I can. I guess that's my job. Um, so watch again. So this is the step that I wouldn't necessarily show, but show, tell me the minute you don't understand where I got something from. 
How's everybody so far? Because 12 is 2 times 6, right? Mm -hmm. So what is 2.5 times 2? Any 0.5 thing, if I double it, it's not a decimal anymore. Is that cool? Because it's got some kind of a half in it. So if I double it, it's got nothing but whole shit in it. So two and a half doubled is, of course, five, right? Yes? Is that right? And then I just got five times six. Wait, what? All right. Um, <laughs> I got it. I, I understood. Wait, how'd you get to What's wait. two point? Wait. All right. Because All right. two times. Nobody said they had trouble with what I just wrote, but is this okay what I just yes, wrote? Yes, yeah. I just don't know how you got to no. five. What's twice two and a half? That's, that's What's two point five plus two point five? Five. Okay. That's five. Right. This is five, and I've got my times six. This is thirty. Is that right? Yes. All right. So how would I do this? Oh, okay, okay, but try to skip this step. Aww. So you're gonna you're gonna steal a two from him, right? Yeah. What? All right, let's, <laughs> we're doing the exact same thing. I don't like skipping steps because now I, that's, I have to write it down or I get really really confused right, and I leave right. out a bunch of stuff. Okay. All right, let me. So when this if this is times nine, so I cut him in half, I can double this guy and the product remains the same. Okay. Right? Oh oh oh! I got it! I got it! I got All right, hold it! Hold on! Hold on! Let's let it go. <laughs> so that's nine. What's double? Seven and a half. Fifteen. Fifteen. Fifteen times two is thirty. Because what I did was, um, because what I did was actually nine times two, and then seven point five times two would seven point five times two would be 15. But then you still have a times nine there, right? Yes, I okay. do. All right, now how can you do 15 times nine? We can actually do something we did earlier, 15 times 10, uh, yeah. minus 15 minus. times one, right? Yeah, 15. So I could do 15 times 10, minus 15 times one, 150 minus 15. Yeah. All right, remember what we did earlier? How do we do 15 times nine? Isn't that 10 15s minus 115? Yeah. Yes? Which is 150 minus 15, which is 135. Okay, okay. Let's try it again. All right. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. All right, let me show you every step. Okay. All right, stay with me. Stay with me. Here we go. Guys, guys, guys. All right, here's the step I sort of skipped earlier. There we go. Let's bring it back. You're all cool when I didn't show the plus one and the plus one when we were making things go up by one. Okay. Now I can put that factor of two on the other two because it's all multiplication. So who gives a shit? He can go where he wants to. The quickest way to double something 0.5, double this and add one. Because double a half is one, yes? So double seven is 14 plus one is 15. Okay, I lost that. And then you could do this multiple ways. Uh, you could do it this way. 10 times 9 is 90. 5 times 9 is 45. And if you add those, you get 135. Has anybody ever multiplied that way? Yes, I have. And if actually that's the explanation behind what we do when we just set it up like normal. Right? No? Yes? Maybe? No? You guys okay? Everybody? Sure was, though. Can we go back to the Oh, okay. okay. What's up? Okay. She's so, she's like saying this is so easy. I'm like this half of this class doesn't math. True, sort of. It's more. Okay. It's more like thinking. You can even do. You can either do it this way. You can either do it. Is this the only class that you think in? <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, the college as a whole. All right, guys. You can either do it this way or you can do it that way. Right. You had to do it a way other than this. Yes? Okay. Right. Yeah. So yes, you don't want to show them this at the beginning. That actually is a part of Common Core kind of stuff that I agree with. 
That's an algorithm that uses things you're supposed to teach them ahead of time, and then you can, and once you explain all that, this will make a lot more sense. If you just show them this, this has happened to you, I know, in your math class. All right, they just did it that way. So I'm going to do it that way and get a number, and they said it was right. Good, right? Yes? And then you're like, yeah. I have no idea why that worked, but I'm just going to do it that way forever. And all right. So that sucks so much. So I do kind of appreciate. There's a lot of it I don't like. But some of what I do like in Common Core is what is the idea behind what we do, right? And a lot of adults that grew up without Common Core, they don't even know why it works. They don't know why it works. They just do it and it works, and what the hell? Why would I care why it works? But we got to be more enlightened. We got to be more invested in this shit. We want to know, let our students understand fully why these things work. Yeah? Can you do the other one over here? Sorry? This way? All right, so anybody got this written down that they want it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right, so here I would do 15 <laughs> times 9. 9 fifteens is 10 fifteens minus 1 15. So multiply by 9, multiply by 99, multiply by 999. You can do them all the same way. Maybe? If I had to, if you had to multiply by a number, what would you hope that number is besides one? Zero. Well, maybe ten. Isn't ten like the next best thing? <laughs> zero would be awesome. Yes. <laughs> like one hundred. You just added zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? No. Yeah. So. <laughs> all right. Does, guys, does anyone not understand this step here? Mm -hmm. I don't understand. I do. Sometimes. Sorry. Yeah. Now watch. Can I your step where you said there was no one? Watch, 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 watch. Nine X's. Isn't that 10 X's minus one X? Nine fifteens. Isn't that 10 fifteens minus one fifteen? Yes. Okay, I like it. That kicks so much ass, but you are definitely not used to doing this, are you? No. In fact, you didn't even know you were allowed to, did you? I did first. Okay, you did. I'd like it. All right. But you're, of course we're allowed to, because it's how things work, right? So, so now this is 150 minus 15, 135. Well, that, okay. I love you guys. I can't read you today. Everything is just so <laughs> staring at me intently like, start making sense. <laughs> <That> was... <laughs> All right. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Do I have an example? Not really. Oh, yeah, I've made several. Um, there's, okay. What's really funny to me is we've done some kind of technical, freakier shit. Uh, <laughs> uh, so let me show you some not so technical, freaky shit. If you had to do this sum in your head, in your head, in your head, <laughs> how would you do this? One way you can do that just in your head. Add the zeros, maybe? Add the zeros, how do you mean? I mean, just replace the zeros and then you add the 11 and 43 and then the 27. How about this? 800, is this what you mean? Yeah, yeah. Plus 900 yeah. plus 100 plus 11 plus 43 plus 27, right? Yeah, exactly. All right. That's in your head. Yeah, in your head. That's in your head, though. <laughs> <laughs> so what you do, what you do in your head is you say 1,800, okay. 1,800. Because, because we know so you got that, that right? And then you go 11, 43, 54, 1,800. You still got 1,800, all right. 11, 43, 54, 54 and 27, 81. So it'll be 1881. Yep. <laughs> That is right on the edge of too much to keep okay. going, right? Wait. Sing it. Yes. Oh, wait, how did I get 77? Anyway. Here, let's try a simple one. I got it. Let's try a simple one. I just did not have it. How would you do this here? Yes. Uh, when, 
Okay, that's it. Go like that's 40 right plus there. 16 <laughs> plus 70, and then that'll be seven, eight, nine, yeah, so 40 plus 60 plus 70. <laughs> Plus 5, plus 1, plus 3. 170. That'd be 170 plus 4. Why does that kick so much ass? Plus 40 and 60. It's 100. 6, 7. Yeah, so 170. 179. Oh, that's fine. I got it. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Barbie feels like we're trying to make it like that's the place to stop. That's music class. It was amazing. No, that's not too bad. It's very dramatic. I like that. Do you think we could do a review for a quiz that's coming? We did. No. Um, expand this a little bit. Um, what do you guys think about <laughs> this here? Wait, no, that was a different I could do that same thing, except now it would be, no, no, this is a different from the one we just did, obviously, it's a multiplication. <laughs> Couldn't I do 48 times 100, but then I have to subtract the how many 48s? Two. Yeah. So that'd be 4,800 minus? Here's something nifty, watch, watch, watch. 48 is two below 50, yes? Right. So twice that will be four below 100. Let me say that again. 48 is two below 50. So twice that will be four below 100. So be 96. 96, four below 100. Yeah, 96. That's so fat. And what's 4,800 minus 96? 4,704. Nifty shit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Again, they all kind of have the same sort of idea behind them. But you got to be careful of this multiplication or addition, of course, right? Because one is involving division and multiplication. This one's neat because it's it's saying repeat multiplication is repeated addition, which allows us to rewrite this problem as a repeated addition of 48 minus an, a few 48s. It's, it's, it's beautiful. It's coming right off the definition of multiplication. This is my hopeful Tai Chi. Okay. Um, oh, how about this? Does anyone know a nifty way? I've kind of lost track of my numbering here. A nifty way to divide by five. Oh. I think I've shown you this once, but I didn't really make a big deal out of it. Oh. Uh, I was going to say 50 divided by five. Okay, and I don't want to estimate. Again, I want the exact answer. So again? I only know how to divide evenly by five, whether it's a zero or a five. Of course, of course. Uh, now, let me ask, let me ask this. Besides one, what do you want to divide by? What's an easy thing to, divide. to divide by? Two. Two? So what's 111 divided by two? No. So try Wait, what? What's a really good thing, right? Do you agree with me now? Is it always easy to divide by two? No. There is a number that is always easy to divide by. Ten. Ten. Because what does dividing by ten do? It makes the decimal move back once. Because our number system is based on ten for some reason. So when I divide by 10, I just move everything back a place. Yes? <laughs> yes, yes uh, that, that makes sense. So what is 78 divided by 10? 7.8. 7 yes? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Yes? What the, uh, time? What, what the flapjack? <laughs> All right, no? So we have to know this. When you multiply by 10, don't you move the decimal over once, yes? Yeah. So when I divide by 10, I move the decimal back. Why should it work like that? Because our number system is based on 10. That's why 10 is the kick-ass number for using. Yeah. Now, what does that have to do with this guy? Hey, 10 down here, Jeff, but how do I make that a 10? Legally, how do I make that a 10? <laughs> You're not allowed to add 5 to the bottom of a fraction. What are you allowed to do to the top and bottom of a fraction? Multiply. Multiply. 
Somebody in the back is like, just freaking do that. <laughs> so yeah, if I multiply by two, I get 10 on the bottom, what are you on the top? 50 doubled is 100, seven doubled is 14, yes? Yes. Yes? yes. Doubling anything, double 50, double seven. Add them together, you're done. Now, how do I do this? 11.4. 11 point, done. That's a lot easier than long division by five, yes? Is that what, it, is that what 57 divided by five is, too, correct? Say, sorry? 57 well, divided by five sorry. is also You got your calculator. Oh, okay. <laughs> And everybody's like, I it got a calculator. I'm like, I, I did it faster. You I'm, I'm totally or, lost now. Sorry? <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm lost with the division part. I'm like, what? Where'd you go? All right, listen, listen. listen. 118 divided by 10, bam, is 11.8, for example. Yeah. When I divide by 10, I just move the decimal back once. Uh -huh. So if I divide by 100, I would move it back twice. It's crazy. Uh, so if I had something divided by 5, if only that was a 10, well, how do I make it a 10? Can't I double top and bottom? Yes. That'd be 10 over 22. And then division by 10 is easy. I just move the decimal back once. And it's going to be 2.2. .2. Yes. Oh. Okay. That one. I'm kind of letting you in on how I do a lot of my mental mathematics. Now, a lot of times I estimate, especially if it's something like, 4.79 divided by 0 0.037. I can kind of come off sounding amazing if I can just, and I got all these nice ways, nice ways to estimate what the answer is going to be. And if I get close enough, it's very impressive, right? And of course, I'm a math guy, so of course, that's my one skill. Um, so a little bit of what we're going to talk about is estimation. I got rewarded for that. Let's do it. So let me ask you this. Are any of you guys, well, nowadays, well, let me ask you this. Are any of you waiters or waitresses or ever been a waiter or a waitress? Anybody? I've been a host for no. Host? Anybody who's ever worked off tips? Yes? Yes? Now, yeah. Okay. But now, don't all the receipts, is this true for where you worked or work? The, the bottom of the receipt tells them how much they should yeah, yeah. tip, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So back in the day, they didn't, right? Back in the day, you had to rely on people's math skills, right? which they would always err on the side of less, yes? Um, so, a normal tip, if the, if the service was okay, what would a normal tip be? 3.15, is that it? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> How much, what percentage would a normal tip? 20, okay, 20. You're a good person. I was going to say 15. <laughs> I'd say 15%. Okay. Um, all right, so how would you do, how would you estimate? Estimate, so I don't need the exact answer, I just need an estimate. If I had a meal that cost, uh, what do you got, Jeff? If I had a meal that cost, you do it, write it down. Uh, $68.12. I wanna know the tax, not the tax, the amount of tip that I should give on top of that. I want an estimate though, so don't touch your calculators. <laughs> Anyone have an idea how to estimate this? What's a good thing to do with 6812? Freaking make it 70, right? Okay, so that's the first thing. So we're going to estimate this. So the first step is take this and raise it up to 70 bucks. That's a good idea, right? Now what? There's a few different tricks you could use. One of them I just showed you a little while. So what is the actual work going to look like if we say I'm dealing with 70? I want to take what of uh, what did what? What do I do? What do I need to do with the numbers? Well, uh, multiply. multiply. Everybody cool with that? Yeah. It used to be back in the day people came out of high school knowing the word of means multiply. People don't know that anymore. It makes me sad. Of means multiply. Yes. So 15% of 70, this will be times 70, and what do I put here? 0.15, right? 15%, 15 per 100, 
decimal goes back twice, just like we talked about a second ago. Mm -hmm. That'd be $10.50. Did you do it in your calculator? Mm -hmm. yes. I don't want that. <laughs> I want an estimate. So now, does anyone have any idea? Yes? I knew that 10% of Good. 70 is 7, and so that 5% would be 3.5. Add them together, it's 10.5. 10% of 70 is 7. Now, now, this is really cool. This is the way I would do it. 10% right? of 70 is 7. Therefore, 5% of 70 has to be half of that. So, therefore, 15% is going to be 10 50. Well, that's so weird. Yeah. <laughs> Let me stop for a minute. Does everybody understand that logic? Yes. Yeah. Obviously, you do because you're the one that told me. Did anyone have a different way? Yeah, the, the other way kind of sucks a little bit on this problem, but you could think whenever you have something here that ends in a five or something, couldn't you do, let me just write this down. This, way, this is the way I would do it. This is my preferred way. You could also do that thing we were doing earlier. Take half a 70. Right? No? What were we doing this earlier? Again, all right, let me show you the steps. I'll write that two more pages. 15, isn't 72 times 35? Yeah. So isn't twice 15.3? Okay. And then if you do that, three times 30 is a dollar. A dollar. 0.3 times 30 is 10.3. Ah, this sucks. Three times 30 is 90. Three times five is 15. Yes? No. Wait. Yes. 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 The point will come in now. Bam. Bam. So that'll be 1050. So you can, that's kind of nifty. Nifty? I didn't want to think about point 0.3, so I thought about 3. 3 times 30 is 90. 3 times 5 is 15. It was point 0.3, so it's actually 9.0 and 1.5, and that still makes 1050. I think you agree with me, though. This is my favorite way to do it. Yeah. Okay, I like it. So, just to kind of build on that, um, and then we'll do a couple of different types of estimation. Uh, why are you doing this, Jeff? You don't need to do this, Jeff. I just did that. You don't need to do this. What if I had to do, I like this approach of like constructing what you need. Uh, let's see if that makes sense. What would 11% of 80 be? We don't even have to estimate this because I already made it a nice round number. But do it the same way we just did it. What's 10% of 80? Yeah, it'd be 0.1 times 8. 80, yeah, so that's $8. And what else do I, do I really want this, you guys to understand? 10% of 80 is definitely 8. Is that cool? Because 10% is like one tenth of something. Yes, maybe. But to make 11%, what else do I need to know? What 11%? I need to know. 1%. Oh, sorry, I was thinking decimals already. Right. Okay. So what's 1% of 80? Well, if 10% of 80 is 8, 1% is one tenth of that. Yes, maybe? If 10% is 8, 1% is that divided by 10. 0.8. 0.8. If 10% is 8, 1% must be that divided by 10.8. So then what's 11% of 80? 8.8. 8. 8. 8. 8. I like it. Okay, so let's take a step back. I kind of jumped right into the most interesting part. Let's go back a step. Um, there's some really, all right, let's do this. So estimation. Who is the mic here? So there's one form of estimation that's called um, one column front end estimation. Oh my God, these names are just insane. One column front end. So for example, if I had 256 plus uh, 531, 
Is there one column front end? Yeah, one column front end. We'll see what it means in a minute. So what would a high estimate? One column front end. So it's like the first column. You only pay attention to the two and the five. So it would be a low estimate would be 200 plus 500. Everybody agree that's definitely a low estimate, right? So that's 700. It's crazy. What would a high estimate be? 300 plus 600. Yes? Okay. So the actual answer has got to be somewhere between 700 and 900. Now, how good your estimation has to be will tell you what method you're going to use. This method sucks. Yes? Mm -hmm. So this would be like, if it doesn't really, it'd be like 200 something, 500 something, about 700 to 900. So if it's the number of chairs you need, you're going to get freaking 900 chairs, just to be sure. Right? Okay. So that's why sometimes you don't have to know. You can just be conservative and go farther one direction or the other. Maybe. Um, then they just got kind of silly. So I want to show you everything the book talks about. Two column front end. What do you think that means? Yeah. yeah, the two first columns, so the two first digits. So you would do this one, so this is one column front end, would be this. So two column front end would be 250 plus 530, right? So 780, that's a low one, and a high one would be 260 plus 540 is 820. Now obviously that's better immediately, right? Because we're getting better resolution. We're not ignoring as much of the number. It's also pretty silly at the same time. I don't know if you guys agree with that. A little bit, yes. So what's, what's kind of the best way to estimate addition stuff like this? Um, so if I didn't have to be really, really perfect, how could I estimate this? 260. Okay. 260. 530. 530. So one idea is, since I'm just estimating it, it doesn't have to be perfect, but if you make one number go up, you better make the other number go down mm -hmm. so that it sort of averages it out a bit. Does that make sense? Yeah. I like it. So then we get... 790, which is right in between those two estimates, but we got there pretty quick, right? Okay, so this idea of rounding while you estimate, so rounding the numbers intelligently. If you round some up, you better round some down, so overall it comes out close. Obviously, if, we're, if you round them both down or you round them both up, you're going to be way too far on one end or the other. Way too high, way too low. Okay, I like it. I like it. There's some other freaky little words around. Oh, yeah, this is really funny. Um, all right. Blah, blah, blah. We already talked about that. I like it. And I already talked about that. Oh, shit. All right, so let's talk about this. What about other operations? What about uh, multiplication? Estimating multiplication state. So if I had to estimate this here, uh, what do you got, Jeff? Sure. I want to estimate that, right? Yeah, so if I make the 60 go down, which makes sense because it's already closer to 60, make the 78 go up, then 6 times 8 is 48, and you tack on two zeros. Yeah. Now, can somebody help me out? What is 63 times 78? Four thousand nine hundred fourteen. What is it? Four thousand. Four thousand nine hundred fourteen. So what do you think? Is that pretty close? Yes. Close. Considering how quickly we did that, that's pretty damn good, right? You could do this in your head, couldn't you? Yes. Maybe. Yes. <laughs> all right. All right. Not too bad. What about division? So I want I want you to realize something. When we add or multiply. Say. What direction do they have to go? If one goes up, the other one should go 
down. Down. To make sure your estimate is as good as it can be. Okay. What about, like, uh, well, let's start off with subtraction. How would I estimate? How would I estimate this? Uh, what do you got, Chuck? Write something. There it is. Look at that. 127 minus 35. How would I estimate that? So you do 130 minus 30. 30. Oh, oops. No. Nope. You can't do it. All right. So when you multiply and add, you want them both to go the same way. We already know this, right? Yes? I mean, I'm sorry. Let me say this again. We want them to go different directions. So if you make one go up, you want the other one to go down. So they kind of fill in what they're kind of missing, yes? We already know when you're subtracting, you want to make them both go the same way. We already know that, don't we? Oh. So... Why? Stay with me. Why is that? Because subtraction is all about distance between things. Yes? So I want to maintain that distance. And the same thing is going to happen with division. So if I do this, if I make this go up, I want this to go up also. And that's going to make this closer to what it really is. So subtraction and division, I want to round the same direction. So what if I had division? Uh, what do you got, Chuck? I don't know. What about... Um, you can do it, buddy. <laughs> uh, 5,291 divided by 5.176. So now, to keep the division the same, the ratio the same, they have to go the same direction. Real quick, why does that make sense? What is 20 divided by 4? Five. If I make 20 become 10, what do I have to make 4 become? So the answer is still 5. 10 divided by 2. So we know they have to go the same direction in order for the answer to remain about the same. Right? So what direction do you want to take these? Up. I'd rather take them down. Isn't that already close? If I make the bottom 5, so I take it down, I can make the top Freaking 5,000, that's beautiful, right? Yes? Can you go far, Can you go down that far? I mean, because we're going down 291. But this is division, so it's not... So it's 291 out of 5,291. I don't think we want to get that technical, though. So somebody help me out. That, of course, is 1,000. Somebody, what is this, actually? Put this in your calculator. Calculator, please. Calculator, please. It is, oh, this is a big one. 1,022.217929. Oh, it's almost there. It's almost there. Uh, 1,000, I said 1,022.217929. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, All right. Pretty damn good, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't that pretty good? All right. <laughs> All right. So what's interesting is, real quick, let me see if you guys are cool with this. Let's see, so you're worried because this is 291 and I only changed this one by 0.176, right? Right? Yeah. Okay. But you got to think of it in terms of multiplication. So 291 out of 5,291. Isn't this sort of like 176 out of 5,176? So we'll sort of ignore the decimal for a second. It's the same ratio. So watch. I'm, just, I'm not going to say much more about it. So you're worried about So look at this. No, I Didn't I change it by that much? Didn't I change it by that much? What? Sorry. Didn't I change this by this much? Yes. yes. Out of this much. What? All right, that's all. Okay. So it, basically, if I watch this, how do I make this stay exactly the same? Eight hundred divided by four. If I make the top sixteen hundred, what's the bottom that got to become so it stays the same? Yes? Right? Didn't you make this go up by four, but you made this go up by freaking 800, yes? Because addition didn't come into play here. This is about multiplication division. So it's all about this is twice this, and this is twice this. That's what matters. The amount that I raised this up by is 100% of this. I know that 800 
divided by four just instantly would be 200. I, I know, I know, but that wasn't the point here. It was just, what would I have to do to keep the answer the same if I doubled the bottom? I would have to double the top, right? And then if you look at it by, this went up by four, but this went up by 800, but that was exactly what it had to do. Is that better? Maybe. So I like that you're worried that we made this change by 291, but we sort of made this change by 176 in a way. So it's almost the same change. Okay, that's why it came out so close. All right. So every, I think you can pick up on the fact that everything we're discussing as a more technical branch we can go off on, yes? We're not going to go off a lot of those branches unless you kind of ask your question. It makes me think, oh, maybe they want to go that way. Um, we make sure I didn't miss anything. No. Can we do practice problems for the quiz if we didn't miss anything? Uh, yeah, we can. Yeah, I, I pretty much got through what I needed to. So if you have any. Yes. Uh, one more division. So if I had something like um, 7,814.1297 divided by, divided by 75.000319, you guys understand it doesn't matter where shit decimals I put in there, right? Because we're all gonna we're gonna make it into whole numbers anyway. So if you want to estimate, you don't have to long divide this. Yes. Do you want to take them both up or take them both down? Uh, uh, yeah, because this guy is almost. Thanks for the help. Eight thousand. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So and this has got to go up. Eighty. And that of course is. One hundred. <laughs> there you go. And what is it really? Somebody do it real quick. Four. So let's see, it's one hundred four. One hundred four point something. Four. Three hundred one forty. One hundred four point oh eight. No, no, no. questions about the chapter three quiz that's good otherwise you're free to go you got through what i needed to what you got okay so i turned it on the 